from the last 14 years my life is getting uh, super 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 beautiful hallelujah i i met a person you know of my old life in bombay and i met him after 14 years i had met him in my past life and then i met him now and um, as i know as i told you in my past life i had lost everything but there was one factory which was in partnership sit 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 you can take her on a lab good the baby will enjoy more now okay so i met him after a long time and uh, i spoke to him and i said you know do you remember uh, you know my life was as i said very bad and i had this one factory where there was a partnership and there were a lot of things that were done wrong and it was my old life now when the lord touched me the lord would speak to me again and again and again and say the foundation of that factory has been built on wrong things so if you even think of getting money out of there it will not flourish and even it flourishes it will not bear fruit so i was asking the lord what do i do and he said just call him and give it to him and tell him this is yours i got nothing to do the property the machinery everything and i called up that partner and i said can you please meet me and we sat down in a restaurant and this brother whom i met i he was with him and we signed an agreement and i said everything is yours i don't want to have anything and i asked this boy whom i met him after 14 years and i said what did you think of me that day and he said on that day i thought you were a fool to give away everything and it looked crazy to me and i said to him what do you think about me today and he says today your life is a wow and i said you know why it's a wow because i decided to cut off everything of my past everything that is corrupted i don't want any more corruption in my life i want to walk clean with my god and when i made that decision to walk clean praise be to god he made it super clean then i asked him what about that factory and what about the machinery he said it worked for another one year two years or three years and there was a crisis he had to sell off the machine he had to sell off the property and all those things and i began to think on what he said and i said if i had to be in that partnership it would have had an effect on me and it would have uh, created more and more problem for me so before that could happen the lord just told me cut off from anything that is ungodly have nothing to do with it and just get uh, trust me i will get you through amen, amen. Hallelujah. hallelujah so if you got a fellowship with anything ungodly and you are expecting a uh, blessing to come it won't come if the root is wrong the fruit has to be wrong let's close eyes father we thank you and praise you thank you for the testimony of jude once into drugs into alcohol smoking into sexual sin into so many things parents fed up family fed up everything is fed up marriage into crisis everything into crisis but lord when the word was being proclaimed it is your grace and your anointing that gave him the desire to listen to your word more than an hour standing in that hot sun everything in the body saying come on let me go home but made a decision to listen to the word father that very day 
Jude got born again. That very day he gave his life to you, Jesus. The situations were the same, the crises were the same, everything was the same. But praise God, that day your word like a hammer destroyed his stony heart, a hardened heart and gave him a new life. And his journey began. Father, when he looks behind five years from then, all that the enemy has stolen, one by one, the restoration has come. In the same way, Lord, there are many of us who are sitting here, who have been going through different issues in life. And we want a solution to our situation. The only solution to every situation is to walk in your love, to walk in your word. So this morning as we go through this journey, O oh Lord, teach us the secrets of your kingdom. Reveal to us the truths that will destroy every lie of the devil, every deceivement and make us walk in the ways that is pleasing you. We thank you and we praise you, Father, for this great blessing. In Jesus' name, Amen. So yesterday we were studying about David. If there were some who have not come yesterday, we were studying in about David, uh, 1 Samuel 30, and verse number 1 onwards. Okay, let's read it. And it came to pass, when David and his men were come to Ziglag on the third day, that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziglag and smitten Ziglag and burnt it with fire, and had taken the woman captive that were therein, they slew not any, either great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. So David and his men came to the city, and behold, it was burnt with fire, and their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captives. Then David and the people who were there, were with him, lifted up their voice and wept, until they had no more power to weep. And David's two wives were taken captives, and he known the Jezreelites, and Abigail, the wife of Nabal, the Carmelite. And David was greatly distressed, for the people spoke of stoning him. Because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and for his daughters. But, but David, but David, but David, he encouraged himself in the Lord is God. So how do you get encouraged? How do you get encouraged? The only way you can get encouraged is when you encourage yourself in the Lord. How do you get discouraged? What's the opposite of courage? Discourage. You get courage when you have with you the word of God on whom you trust, on whom you are meditating on. When do you get discouraged? Like my brother, when the doctor said that there is nothing can be done, your wife is going to die and all those things. Praise God. Now those words were discouraging. Right? So, so when you get your focus on a situation which is coming against you, you get discouraged. But look at David. He had a situation where his wife was gone. His children were gone. Okay. He did not know where they were gone. He doesn't know anything. But yet he chooses to encourage himself in the Lord. It's not only the situation is bad. But now it is more bad. Because his very people. His very own friends. Are now planning to stone him to death. 
Come on, with his eyes, he can see everything coming against him. But yet, he makes a decision to encourage himself. My friend, if you are going through anything in life and you want people to come and encourage you, that will not encourage you. That will give you just an emotional high for a small period of time as long as they are there. But if you start encouraging yourself in the Lord through his word, you start meditating on his word, you start speaking his word, you start thinking on his word, you start acting on his word, might be it looks like it is a total defeat. But if you do that, praise be to God, the Bible says that's called encouraging in the Lord. Then what did he do? And David said to Abiathar, the priest, Hey Melech son, I pray thee, bring me here the ephod. And Abiathar brought there the ephod to David. And David inquired at the Lord saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue, for you shall surely overtake them and without fail recover all. So what's the key? What's the key to get recovery of everything? After the encouragement, what's the next word? To pursue. What's the meaning of the word pursue? To go after with a commitment. No matter what happens, you are not changing your direction. If any person is looking out for recovery of anything and everything that the devil has stolen from you, you must encourage yourself in the Lord and with what you are encouraged with those words and the promise, you must hold on to those promises and be constantly, consistently pursue after those lost things. After, uh, pursue after the Lord. Amen. So yesterday we were learning about some of the points. You can write down the first point and then we study. How do you pursue? In the midst of hard times, what did David do? He pursued. So the first thing he did, write down those who have written yesterday, don't write. Okay. David did as God instructed. David did as God instructed and recovered all. David did as God instructed and recovered all. Second point. If David had failed to pursue, if David had failed to pursue, he would have never overtaken. He would have never overtaken his enemy and recovered all that was lost. And recovered all that was lost. Praise God. So very, very important that you got to pursue. It's a commitment. Okay. The first point you write, what, how do you pursue, uh, pursue in your day-to-day -day life? The first thing is, God has made promises to us. God has made promises to us that are found in his word. He wants us to receive his promises in our lives. He wants us to receive his promises in our lives. However, We cannot receive, however, we cannot receive them without pursuing them, without pursuing them with our faith. So, praise God. So, every day you might be confessing the scriptures, I am the body of Christ, Satan, you have no power, no place in me. You are confessing the scriptures. But that's not enough. You got to pursue. Okay, so how to pursue, please write down how to pursue the promises of God. How to pursue 
the promises of God. First one, locate the promise you need from the word of God. Very, very important. The first thing that you got to do is locate the promise you need from the word of God. Mark 4, 14. Please read that verse 414. So the sower went and sowed the seed. And what is that seed? The word. Hello? The word. Now the first thing, when the farmer sows a seed, does he already know the harvest he is going to get according to the seed? The kind of harvest he is going to get. So even if the farmer has a desire for a harvest and he doesn't have a seed, will he ever get the harvest? The harvest will be always according to the kind of the seed. So in the same way, if you want anything that God has promised you in his word, then you must have that word planted in your heart because that word is going to bring forth the harvest. Uh, for example, when you look at a seed, you don't see any power in it. The seed never moves. It looks like it's a dead seed. But that same seed is programmed by God to produce the kind of tree, the kind of leaf, the kind of fruit when it is nourished, watered, taken care of, the plant will mature and bring forth the fruit. If the plant is uh, taken care of and watered and nourished, can anybody stop it from bearing fruit? Come on. No. So, the harvest is already programmed in the seed. In the same way, the harvest for a life is already programmed in the seed called the word of God. Are you understanding? God has already programmed it. Have you realized when a, when a farmer wants rice, he makes a decision to plant rice. He doesn't plant wheat and then goes into fasting and praying and says, from the wheat seed I will get rice as a harvest. So you are also a farmer who is supposed to plant spiritual seed to get spiritual harvest. Now somebody might say, but I want the harvest in the physical realm. Listen, everything in the physical realm is controlled by the spiritual realm. And the spiritual realm that controls the physical realm is the, the, the power by which it is controlled is the word of God. God created all physical things by a spiritual seed called the word of God. Please understand the formula. So if you want any harvest in the physical, you must have a spiritual seed and that spiritual seed will sprout, grow and bring in the harvest in the physical realm but using a spiritual seed. Many of us seated here want to change some situations in their physical realm and they want to use physical seed to change physical things. The Lord says no, you use the spiritual thing to change physical things. Did you get that? So the first thing is you must locate. You must search and research the promises of God. For example, he was in the hospital and he could not get me through the line and he got Brother Albert and he said, "This listen, my, my doctor has said that my wife is dying. What does he speak to him? Romans 4.17, just put Romans 4.17. Look how he locates a scripture and gives it to him. Romans 4.17. <coughs> what does it say? Just put it up, Baba. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations before him in whom he believed, even God who calls, even God who calls, who, who quickens the dead or who gives life to the dead. God gives. 
So Abraham and his wife Sarah, when it comes to reproduction, they were both dead in that area. But praise be to God, God put life into that area of their life that he not only gave him a son, but he made him and called him the father of many nations. In other words, when God planted that seed in Abraham, something that was dead, he put life into it and he did not put life just for one generation, but he put that life in that seed that the descendants who would come would have no problem in that defective area of reproduction and they would reproduce in such a way that a day would come when Abraham would be the father of many nations. Are you with me? I want you to just think. God puts life into that area which is already dead. And from that area when he puts life, he has planted a seed in Abraham and Sarah. And today when you look behind, is he the father of many nations? All the Muslims you see. Come on. Descendants of Abraham. Praise God. Hallelujah. Look at the descendants of uh, the Jews. Are they the descendants of Abraham? Yes. The descendants of Abraham, the Muslims, coming from Ishmael. The descendants of Jews, coming from Isaac, the promised child. Are you with me? Is he a father of many nations now? Now God put life into him and then he says, God calls those things. God, please read it. And God calls those things which, which be not as though they were. I believe all of you are sitting on a sofa, right? On the table, very good. On? Why do you call it a chair and why not a sofa? Because every name has got a particular character. And when you look according to that character, you call it by that name. Every one of you have got a pencil in your hand. Uh, why is it called a pen and not a pencil? A character. So all things in this world are called by names. And every name has got a character. And according to that character you call by name. Praise God. Every person seated here has got a name. So in this world everything has got a name. So God calls what? Look, 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 read, read it. God calls. Listen. God calls those things. Do we call things by names? Do we call things by name? This is this and this is that and that is that and that is that. Don't worry, she's comfortable. She's comfortable. Now let not that negative thought keep you away from the word of God. All you can say, God bless her for such a beautiful love that she has got for my baby. That's all. And be attentive. Other the devil will keep you busy. How come she did that? Oh God, why did she sit down? And all those things. You, you know, the devil can uh, get your attention off even from good things. So don't get your attention off. Praise God. Hallelujah. So we, we call all things by name. But we don't call things to come here. We call people to come here. Do you call things? No. But God calls things that be not. For example, a person is blind. What will you call him? A blind man. Right? What did Jesus call a blind man? Ah. Jesus never called a blind man, you are blind. But he said, come on, receive sight. So Jesus called what is not as though he is. He is blind, but Jesus called him, receive sight. What do we call? We call things which are, which are. God calls which are not as though they are. So, in other words, 
Jude said, I was in debts. God calls him, you are debt free. Why? Because he says, when you seek me and my kingdom and my righteousness, everything else will be added unto you. And I am the God who supplies all your needs. I am your provider according to my riches, not your riches. When you look at your riches, you are saying, I am in debts. When you look at God's riches or what he did for you on the cross, he says, I supply you with everything that you will ever need in your life. I have deposited in your account through my son Jesus. So, what do you call? Do you call things which are or do you call things which are not? Because we have been trained all our life to call things which are. The doctor called him and told him, your wife's condition is bad. She won't make it. What did Brother Alred tell Brother Jude? Listen, God is a God who gives life to your wife. And therefore, don't worry. Everything will be fine because he is the one who gives life to your wife. Now, what is he going to do? He's got to believe it. He's got to call it. Praise God. Okay, I'll put it this way. When you pursue things, okay, does God love you? Come on. He has set some laws in this life. Okay. And the spiritual law is that whatever you need in your life, whatever you need in your life in the future, he has already deposited in your account and it's in the spiritual realm. It is existing but unseen. Let me repeat again. It is existing but unseen. Okay. Now what is existing? He has given you in a map called the Bible. You can't see it. But you can see it through a gadget called the Bible. For example, here is a cable which is running onto the TV. Now, can you see the anything going on this cable? It's invisible. But if you have a gadget, you will find that there is a frequency through the gadget. For example, here, here is a, a mobile signal. Can you see it? No. But when you uh, take your uh, gadget, the mobile, you will see the strength of that signal. Are you understanding? And we are so uh, easy to believe that the network is there and not there according to the signal. Okay, We have been trained. In the same way he is saying, I have given you a gadget called the Bible. Look at that gadget and whatever is given there, you believe according to that and call those things and those things which are in the spiritual realm which you can't even see. But I know that I can see it because I am a spirit. I can see spiritual things. Praise God. And that's what the Lord is saying. I want you to use my promise and call them. Just as you call people, you call them. And when you call them, those things will begin to manifest in your life. So if the doctor says, you, you go for a test and the doctor says, you are suffering from diabetes. What does he call you after that? You are? What do you call yourself now? When you, when you tell anybody, uh, see, uh, somebody offers you a sweet dish. What do you say? Now, what did you call yourself? I am a diabetic. So, the moment you say, I am a diabetic, the other person says, oh, you got a sugar factory. <laughs> According to that character. But if you call yourself, I used to be a diabetic, but praise be to God, by the blood of Jesus, he has closed down the factory and he has set me free and I am completely healed of diabetes. What did you call yourself? Healed. healed. So when you call yourself, you are calling that healing to come into your system and that, that thing will change the situation of your life. Now check out, do we call things that are not or do we call things that are? We call things which we sense through our physical senses and we believe them and we call them. God said, no, 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 don't do that. I want you to look no longer on your physical senses, but I want you to look through your spiritual senses. What things? What I've already declared in my word. And when you take those things which I've declared in my word and you call them, praise be to God, 
you will call them into manifestation. God saw with his eyes darkness, but God did not call darkness. He said, let there be light. In other words, he called light to replace darkness. Your child is not studying. What are you going to call? My child is, is, is anointed. My child studies well. My child is this. Now, what did, he, what did you hear Jude say? Every night and every day, when we came to know that the conception has taken place, we began to prophesy. What is prophesying? Speaking God's word to God, even though you can't see it. But you are calling or you are speaking those things that God has promised you, which you are believing. It is already existing. It is already in your account, but not your change from spiritual to natural. And the only way to change from spiritual to natural, it requires a raw material called the word of God, which is released out of your mouth, out of your heart, that brings a change from spiritual to natural. Did you get that? And so, from now on, that's going to be your pursuit. You might start on a Sunday morning after this meeting. You'll say, okay, I will go and practice it. But how long do you keep the practice going? After two days, it's not there. Why not? Because you did not believe. If you believe, you will practice it. Do you brush your teeth every day? Why do you brush your teeth every day? Out of practice? Oh no, because if you don't wash, uh, yeah, you believe that. You don't even try to stop to see whether it stinks. You believe it. Hmm? So if you believe it, you will practice it. How do I know somebody believes what is being preached? If the action corresponds to what is preached, that means that person has believed. If that person heard, wrote down the notes and doesn't act on it, that means he has only received the knowledge but he has not yet believed. Because when you believe, you act on it.